What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Nefertiti. I am coming to you um, because a fresh word was given and placed in my spirit. It is something that I, too, have experienced. So I um, understand whenever um, God places you in a situation, um, especially when you are children of the Lord, um, it's not just for you. That situation that God placed you in or allow you to go into is not just for you. So let me give you a little detail. Um, the enemy will dangle little things in front of you. He will um, start off with something small, something um, that you may think you want because uh, it may feel as if it's a lot of pressure. So what he did was he dangled something in front of you and um and so he did that to me he dangled something in front of me that i thought that i want that i thought that would uh entertain me at the time and let me say and with the entertainment i don't necessarily mean um as in something that wasn't going to spark my interest it was something that I want because that's what he does he tries to to lure you in with things that you think you desire you think you want to try to infiltrate your foundation that you're standing and believing God for so whenever you're close to that thing being fulfilled whenever you are close to it and let me give a quick example so once he dangled it um, I got dressed. I was prepared to go to a certain space. And in that, um, I wait, I had to wait. I had to wait um, for the reservation. And in the reservation, um, things begin to come up that would not allow me to walk into that place, which I should have prayed on. But majority of the times when things like that happen, we don't always pray on it. We try to move out of it because one of the first things that we do is try to, I'm not going to say entangle, <laughs> but we try to fill voids and spaces in our lives by um, whatever you think it is. You can do it with, with, um, with television. You can do it with, with alcohol. People do it with, with, um, drugs. People do it with shopping. Um, <laughs> people do it with, um, different things just to occupy their mind because the weight of a thing can feel like it's so heavy on you, especially the, the time of the weight. So let's say, for instance, I don't know if you remember when you were a child, um, well, when I was a child, if we did something out of place in school, we'll have to stand up and hold books either in our hands or on our head. And the weight of that time eventually had us feeling staggered. It had us feeling some type of way because of the weight of you holding that time. So, or you holding that thing up, um, and some of us have been waiting on some promises and we have not seen that thing come to pass yet. And, and so we have tried to, um, we have tried to fill in the space to wait on that thing to come to pass. We have allowed the enemy to try to infiltrate our minds to, to just get us to cave in just a little bit. But once you give in just a little bit, that's when he's going to open up the door and he's going to come in. And the only thing that he comes in to do is to kill, steal, and destroy. The, the thing, that thing that has been lured or th that, that's trying to lure you into saying yes to a thing that God has said no to. He starts off with little things because he's cunning. That's what he does. He's a cunning. He, he gets you off track by trying to present something to you. And God says, will you um, wait on what I have told you? Or will you give in to the temptation of, of, okay, maybe this is it. Or, okay, I don't feel like waiting any longer. Or, okay, I'm going to try to do this thing that way. And which is your own way. It's not the way that God said. Because if it was a way of God saying the enemy wouldn't be able to lure things to distract you. It is a distraction. So in that, you, um, in that distraction, you get off track. You begin to do things that God has not called you to. And you uh, can fall into the temptation of doing things that God has not said yes to. So 
I wanted to come on here and tell you that you are so close. You are so close. You just have to continue to keep pushing, to keep striving. I don't care how many times you've been rejected. The enemy will place, um, he will try to uh, lure you out. Say, for instance, you need some money or something to that degree. He'll offer you different things or or you won't get a breakthrough if, if you, you're waiting on some grant money or you're waiting on that uh, a, a check to come or you're waiting on a breakthrough. It will feel as if you've been holding those books up for quite some time and you will feel like I am tired. Your arms may be tired. Your mind may be tired because you're tired of operating and do, going in the same cycle. Uh, uh, and, and, and it can just feel as if the weight is too hard. But God placed something on my spirit to tell you that you are not the only one. This is what the enemy does. He wants to get you off track. He wants you to get weary in well-doing. He wants to show you, to pull you into a different direction so you can't receive the fullness of what God. But you're so close at that door. That door is about to open. That thing that you've been desiring to come to fulfillment is here and is now. God loves you with the everlasting love. And, and, and he, he keeps showing you like, that's not the way. And sometimes we can say, but Lord, why, why can't I just give in? I'm tired. And we have to be, he is the good shepherd. We have to be the sheep that follow after him. He says his sheep knows his voice. You know, when you're going in the wrong direction, you know, when something is being offered to you, that is not going to fulfill the things of God. So you just have to get up a little strength and say, Lord, I can't handle this thing on my own. I'm getting tired. Can you cannot give the weight to you and that's where we miss it at a lot of times what we do is we don't we don't go to him and say here is the weight or if we give it to him we pick that thing back up and we begin to worry about it and God says you were not built to be able to 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 do what 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 I'm calling you to do you are not built to, to, to try to manage or micromanage the weight of that thing. You were not built to do it. He said, that's what I died on the cross for, to give you a way of escape, to offer you something that man can't do, something that money can't do. I want to offer you the fulfillment, which brings peace, which brings joy, which brings happiness. Fulfillment comes from the Lord. It does not come from temporal things. So sometimes what we can do is we can give in to the temporal things just to feel like it's a little bit ease on us. But God is saying, you are almost here, my child. You have entered into a new space and I want you to receive receive everything that I have for you. But first you have to bring that weight to me. But sometimes it's a little bit difficult to even do that, even when you know the word. So I'm going to go to Habakkuk 2 and, and, and I'm going to read something. Um, I'm going to read it in the NLT version. It's it, verses two says, then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for the future time, a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it. Surely take, it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. That's in the NLT version. But if I go to the NIV version, I'm going to read that to you as well. Then the Lord replied, this is, this is Habakkuk 2 and 2. Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Somebody that can make that thing come to pass. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Through it linger, though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. So I know it's been hard, but sometimes we can go to God and we can remind, we can always go to God and remind him of his word. And if you don't know how to do a certain thing, Google it. What word matches up with 
patience? What word matches up with, with fear? What word matches up with doubt? What word work, uh, mass, matches up with exhaustion? God has something in store for you and you are here. You have made it to the, de the, 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 the um, destination, but in that you have to trust the process and know that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. This word is for those that may have felt as if the weight has been heavy and that they uh, may have felt as if they have missed the mark. You have not missed the mark. You still have time. Repent and ask God to help you get back in alignment so you can see the fulfillment of his promises. God loves you with the everlasting love. So Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, giving thanks unto you, Lord. Your word says that though it tarry, wait on it. We are believing you to fulfill the promises that you placed inside of our hearts. We will not give up. We will continue to, to strive. We will continue to strive in that thing that you have placed inside of our hearts. We will continue to apply. We will continue to believe. Even though it hurts, sometimes it stings a little bit to believe again for something that it seems as if we have failed at time and time again. Sometimes... It may sting a little bit when when it may have not produced what we thought it should have produced and unfulfilled uh, um, expectations come forth, which is disappointment. Lord, we're asking that you heal our hearts, oh God, and give us the strength and the fortitude to move forward on the things of you, to walk away from the things that does not matter or does not bring glory to your name, does not shift us into that moment, into that place that you have for us, oh God. We want you to fulfill our faith, strengthen it, oh God, and strengthen our minds, oh God, so we can move forward in the things of you. You are faithful in all of your ways, oh God. You are the good shepherd and we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, but not as much as you love us with your irrevocable love. Thank you for loving us past our pain, past our circumstances, past our, our deceit, oh God, past our, our, our trespasses, oh God. You are just faithful with all of your ways. We love you and can't nobody do us like you do us. Lord, we know that some things are about to break through for us, but we need just a little more strength strength. We need whatever it is. You know what we stand in need of. So wrap your arms around us and empower us with what we need to move forward in you, God. We thank you, Lord, in advance for every great gift and everything and even answering our prayers and allowing us to come boldly to the throne of grace. We trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty matchless name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. That was a word for you. It was a word for me. God is faithful and he will fulfill what he has promised in Jesus name. Amen. God bless.